I'm Donna Clausen. Welcome to Going to the Dogs. I'm here today with Clay Smith. He is the owner of Clay's Top Dog Training. And he's going to be telling us some helpful hints, ways to help train our dogs. And it's going to be a lot of fun today. So sit down, get a pen and paper, and get ready to learn some things about training your dog. I'm here today with Ted. And I'm sure that when we're through with this, Ted will be setting and doing all the things he's <laughs> supposed to do. Clay, how did you get into this? Well, I was, um, I have been training and working with police service dogs for 15 years. And so I've routinely had people asking me, they'd come to me and say, I wish our dogs at home were as well behaved as these dogs are. Right. And how do we do that? And so it just kind of started from there and, and helping people work with and train their dogs. And, and it's all, it's really basically about communication. So it's teaching, I, I kind of joke around, I call it people training more than dog training. So it's teaching right. someone how to interact and communicate with their dog to get the, the desired behavior that they want. Great, great. Well, I know that, um, Usually when you get a dog as a responsible pet owner, there's some basic things that dogs need to learn. And communication is, you know, that's the perfect word. Mm -hmm. um, and I always say when someone can't uh, train their dog, it's usually the other end of the leash is the problem, mm -hmm. not the dog. I know when it comes to Ted, that's his problem. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me just a little bit about what uh, things you'd recommend for people to train their dog? Well, one thing that everybody wants is a, is a well-behaved dog or well-mannered well dog. And so we have to think about things for manners and then we have to think about things for safety. Okay? And, and most people co will come to me and they'll, they'll highlight certain problems and they'll mm -hmm. say, well, my dog pulls on the leash, he won't walk next to me, I sure wish he would. Or he jumps up on everybody and we have to put him outside the house when people come over and we wish he could be around the family and, and, and problem areas. Um, so we kind of work on that. And then the safety side are mm -hmm. some certain obedience commands. You know, outside of walking on the leash, um, our dogs should sit for us and down for us. Um, I, you know, if your dog takes off after another, another animal or running towards the street, we want to be able to call them back to us so right. they, don't, they don't run out right. and get hit by a car or get in a dog fight with another dog or whatever. So, so those, those obedience, those basic obedient things are necessary for, for their interaction with us and our family and for their safety. Right. Right, and there's not anything more embarrassing than, you know, somebody come to your house and the dog is jumping all over them. So, uh, a well-trained dog was uh, not only a good idea for the pet owner, but also for the dog for the safety issues. Now, some of your training techniques, do, do you use clickers? Do you, what, what kind of things do you use for training? Well, there's basically, um, it, training is two sides of the coin. There's a, we have to be able to communicate with our dog when they're doing right and when they're doing wrong. Okay, and so it comes down to praise and, and corrections. In each of these categories, there's a, there's a whole spectrum of levels that you can be at. Your praise starts out with simple eye contact, the use of the dog's name, the tones that you use, you know, um, your higher pitch tones are rewarding playful tones and your lower pitch tones are your corrective tones. And so it's uh, it, all the way to a touch, Mm -hmm. um, the, a food reward, whatever, a toy reward, whatever motivates the dog is what we use as a reward system. Okay. And then we also have to be able to tell it when it's doing something we don't want it to do. Right. Uh, and, and with that, again, there's a whole spectrum. It can be from a stern look to a sharp noise like an ant or a no, okay. um, all the way to a touch or a, a little, little snap on the leash like, hey, don't do that anymore. So it's important on both sides. To, to be able to say, yes, you're doing right, and no, you're doing wrong. Okay, give me an example of a behavior. Okay, uh, what if one of my dogs, every time someone comes over, uh, they're gonna reach down to pet it, and it rolls over on its back, and there, everything's displayed. It's a little bit embarrassing. What, mm -hmm. what should happen then? Well, a lot of times you, you kind of have to look at what's going on, but the first thing I would say in that situation, if a dog's always rolling over, uh -huh. that um, it's probably used to having its belly rubbed. And so it's seeking a reward from the person, like, hey, okay. come pet me. I'm not a danger to you. I'm submitting to you, you know, pet okay. me. So first thing I would say is don't, don't do that. Don't do that behavior. Don't reward the dog. One of, one of my golden rules is we never reward unwanted or bad behavior. And in order to, uh, we, we have to understand what exactly a, a reward is. All right. And so we just don't want to reward unwanted or bad behavior. And then we try to say, well, what is unwanted or, or bad behavior? Um, and you know, and that kind of comes up to, to what the person requires out of their dog or wants to achieve right. with, with the dog. Right, kind of, it's individual. You know, some people feed their dog cable scraps from the table, right. which isn't always the best thing to do. 
but that happens. So if you don't want your dog to get table scraps, you don't give them scraps from right, the table. Right, right, I mean. right. I have a couple of a, a couple of golden rules with all of my dogs that I recommend for people. All right. And and one of them is uh, never jump up on me. You know, right. it do, it doesn't matter if it's a small dog or a big dog, but. Um, if the dog gets rewarded, if you come in the house and your dog jumps up on you and you pet it and playful and get excited, then, right. then he's going to repeat that behavior okay. when you come home or when someone else comes over. Mm -hmm. And that can be embarrassing or it can be harmful to yeah. someone if the big well, dog jumps on them. Well, it's cute when they're puppies and they jump right. up and then they turn into Great Danes and they're up that. Right. And, and another thing is, is, you know, if we encourage that behavior, if we let them jump on us, it's okay with us on a Saturday morning when we're in our blue jeans. But Sunday morning when we want to go to church and we come out in our church clothes and he jumps on us right. and we're mad at the dog, but it's really our fault because we encourage the Absolutely. behavior. He doesn't know the difference between, hey, she's got on work clothes Absolutely. or church clothes and, and play clothes. Well, one of the few things that I do right in dog training is I make them sit, except for Ted, I make them sit before they eat. Mm -hmm. And that way, they're, you know, since I have four running around at this time, uh, it just makes it a little bit easier on me, and they don't jump up and knock the food on the floor, which is very aggravating. Right, right. So, but that's one of the things I do. When we come back, we're going to have some more tips and techniques and even a demonstration. See you in a few minutes. Hi, I'm Robin Dyer, and I would love for you to come work out with me on my show called Burn. This workout is going to be quick, something you can do at home for your busy lifestyle. Give me about half an hour, and I'm going to help you find your breathless edge. This is the workout that's going to be suited just for you. So come join me and let's get fit together. We're back and I'm with Clay Smith. Uh, he's the owner of Top Dog Training and he's been telling us some really helpful uh, hints and techniques for our dog. And one thing I was thinking about, just about all dog owners have, it, have had at least one dog that likes to get in the trash. Tell me, tell me just a little quick tip what we could do to keep our dog out of the trash, besides putting the trash can up on the table. Right, right. Well, one thing is, um, well, most of us, the dog gets in the trash and we say no and the dog stops and, and we stop right there because the dog listened to us. But the, important, the, the most important ingredient that we miss is when the dog stops that behavior, we want to tell it it did good then. So okay. we want to say, good, you know, good dog, good boy. Now you're back to where I want you okay. to be behaving. So not only say no, but as soon as the bad behavior stops, then we say, good. That's right. where we, that's right. Yeah, and our, and our voice becomes more pleasant and all that. Correct, because the end goal of all of our training is to have voice control. I mean, we have training tools available to us, and, and I have some of those here, and these are collars, mm -hmm. and they're training collars. It's what we start out with. And the end goal is to get completely off of those to where we can have off-leash obedience and our dog will listen to us okay. um, on voice command. Right, well, you said you had some collars. Tell me about that. We do have some collars, and um, I'm just going to touch on a, on a couple different ones. And um, these are training collars. They are most all designed to be transitioned off of. Mm -hmm. uh, they provide us a additional means to communicate with our dogs, like in nature, mother dogs nip the necks and all that. So right. it's, kind of, it's kind of like that. So this first one is a, is a chain slip. Um, it, they're actually called a choke chain, which I really hate the name of that because we should never choke our dog. No, okay? no. But, uh, but the, the way that this fits over their head, it slips over their head and then we will hook our leash onto this. And the way we use that is, is just give it a little jingle. It gives us that little chain sound, that little okay. jingle of, hey, Hey, pay attention to me. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like if you're looking off and I poke you. Hey, okay. get your attention back to me. So right. that's kind of the design of that. So you, and wouldn't, you wouldn't like <sighs> No, no, no. You don't want to string them up, mm -hmm. so to speak. But the other additional benefit to this, a lot of times with a flat collar, if you have a dog that pulls or runs from you, mm -hmm. it can slip out of that if it tries to go backwards. Whereas okay. a collar like this, if he tried to pull on it, it wouldn't allow him to slip off and run off from you. Okay, show me again how you put the ch that into the... All right, well, it's got, it's got two rings on the end, All and right. you just drop your chain through one of the rings. All right. And you have a slip. This is called, what we call the live ring, because it allows it to move, and then okay. the dead ring, which is which solid, and you okay. can link to either one. But this would just be temporary. 
This is a training and tool. And later on, you right, get the correct. Kick collar and all that. Correct, okay. correct. And yeah. then, and then our next, um, our next option up is what they call um, a pinch collar. And again, uh, I'm going to stress that all these are training collars, and you should have someone should teach you how to use these. Right. Uh, I see a lot of people using them incorrectly or putting them on wrong, and right. um, and and they really they're helpful tools, but huh. they need to be under guidance. That for looks that. terrible. That looks medieval. Yeah, I, I hear that a lot. I okay. hear that a lot. But actually, um, well, one thing of this is it's 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 safer. You can't choke a dog like you can with a choke chain. Okay. Okay. So this one only pulls a certain amount, and that's it. See, that is completely pulled, okay. right there. But the way that this works is it fits around it fits around the neck and these little um, teeth, so to speak. It's designed as kind of like the mother dog's teeth, mm -hmm. right? And then when you pull on that, it it pinches. Yep. All of these go together, and if you look, they actually don't touch. Okay. There's space between them. Oh, good. So they just oh, good. pinch the okay. skin up in there, right. three fourths of the way around the neck, like a like a mother dog, and it like says, "Hot, don't." Right, right. And these are um, the, with the with the choke chain or the slip collar. It takes a little more technique and finesse to get okay, your correction. Okay, so they whoever wants to try this, if they have an unruly dog, they need more training. They need they should be shown how to use okay. it because we can okay. do more damage with with tools if we don't know how to use them. Right. Probably. Okay. And then and then the the next one I brought to show you is um, an electric collar, okay. and um, this one, you'll see a lot of uh, duck dogs trained on this type uh -huh. of system. They're waterproof collars. And there's basically two ways to use this. One of them is to stop unwanted behavior. Let's say the example of getting in the trash. Mm -hmm. You would put this on the dog and let him get used to it for a couple days so he doesn't mm -hmm. realize what he has on. Mm -hmm. When he goes to get on in the trash, you give him a little a little stimulation with that right. and he goes, where'd that come from? And right. so it's avoidance. It's, it's, right. it's okay. I stopped doing that. But you're gonna have to be there to catch the That's behavior. That's correct, you're gonna okay. have to be there. Um, they make similar systems for um, the underground fences in your yard, yes. they'll automatically do the stimulation. Yes, my son had one of those, and, it was great. And the anti-bark collars, so when they bark, it gives them the little stimulation, mm -hmm. it's similar. This is this is actually um, handler controlled or, or user controlled, okay. and um, they will come on different levels. And the, the other way to use this is to, what, what basically what you do is you find the lowest level that the dog feels, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's almost like a, uh, it, a if you've ever been to the chiropractor and they put those little electrodes on your back to vibrate your muscles, mm -hmm. that's that's what this is like. Okay, and so, so it doesn't shock it like its hair stands it's straight. It's not like we okay. think of an electric fence okay. where we get shocked. No, okay. no, it's 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 mild stimulation that we can control all the different levels depending on the dog. Right. Not all dogs respond right. to the same so thing. So if you had a dog that just barked and barked and barked and barked and barked outside in the yard and your neighbors were mad and um, you'd want a bark. You'd want a bark collar. Get a bark right. collar, and that you wouldn't want a user-controlled one because no. you'd have to be there all the time right. to stop it. But a bark collar would be the way the route to go on that. Then it could that way, mm -hmm. just a gentle stimulus to remind it, don't do that. Right, right. But but you know, with dog training, it is kind of a, a give and take. And if you're not careful with these these techniques and systems, you put the bark collar on and you teach the dog not to bark, but then he starts whining all the time. So we trade one problem for another. That's why we need. That's why we need little <laughs> little guidance. Top dog <laughs> training. Right. Right. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. I want you to demonstrate some of these techniques when okay. we come back. All right. All right. All right. We'll be back in just a little bit. Heel, Chewy. Heel. Heel. Good boy. Heel. Very nice. Heel. Sit. Down. Come to heel. Sit. Good boy. Yes, sir. Very nice. Good dog. Heel. Down. Come. Down. Come. Sit. Sit. Good boy. Very nice. Thanks for joining us today. Ted and I have had a good time and have learned a lot. Don't forget to keep your dogs up to date on their shots, spay, neuter, buy your city tags, and for heaven's sakes, try to get a chip in case your dog gets separated from you. Thanks again. See you next time. Bye.